This video introduces the last of the classical frequentist methods for null hypothesis statistical testing that we're going to cover in this class. It's called multivariate analysis of variance, or MANOVA, and as its name suggests, it's the multivariate version of ANOVA, which you've already learned about. There are a lot of conceptual similarities between MANOVA and the univariate ANOVA, so let's quickly recap what ANOVA does. So remember that ANOVA assesses the differences between the groups by comparing the between groups mean square, right? It's a difference, it's basically the sample mean relative to the overall grand mean of all samples. And it compares that to the within groups mean square, which is the, the scatter of data within each group. So basically each observation subtracted from the sample mean, sum of squares and so forth. And so the test statistic is the ratio of those two values. So the purpose of MANOVA is to test for significant differences in the multivariate mean, so you have more than one variable per sample, among more than two normally distributed samples. The null hypothesis is that the samples come from populations with identical multivariate means. You could also phrase this as saying there's no difference in the multivariate means between the samples, or between the populations that they come from. So what does, the, what does the MANOVA test do? Well, well, like ANOVA, it compares the differences between each sample mean and the overall mean relative to the scatter of data within each sample. And I won't get into the math, but the difference in means, which is sort of our signal in this ratio, is something called the between groups sum of squares and cross products matrix. So in ANOVA, it was just the between group sum of squares, but given the fact we have multivariate data here, we have to consider both the sum of squares within each variable as well as the cross products between of the variables. The scatter of data within the samples is called the within group sum of squares and cross products matrix. Um, like in ANOVA, the test statistic is the ratio of the between groups to the within groups matrices, which gives us this test statistic A. Remember, in ANOVA, it was just the between groups divided by the within groups as well. On the left for MANOVA, it's written in terms of, in terms of matrix multiplication, um, and it's just, they're not matrices, they're just numbers in the ANOVA. So like in all tests, we need to evaluate the probability of finding an A statistic, and A is actually a matrix in this case. Uh, we need to f evaluate how extreme A is relative to our expectation if the null hypothesis, null hypothesis was true. And it turns out that there's no single, unique, correct way to evaluate that extremeness. This is because of the multivariate nature of the data. And so as a result, there's at least four different statistics that have been devised, each using the eigenvalues of the matrix. So this lambda term are the eigenvalues of the matrix A, the result of the test. So this Wilkes's lambda, the second one, is apparently a commonly used one. It's also a telling lolly trace. The Pillai's trace is the default version in R. Um, I guess it's often also said to be fairly robust, but there is debate over this. In any case, for, for our purposes, you can just use the PILIs trace for the class. Uh, it's the default in R, and that's, that's simple enough. So all of these values, the PILIs trace or Wilkes's lambda or whatever, um, are converted to an approximate F value because of this sort of multivariate nature, and then tested for significance against the F distribution. So the assumptions of MANOVA are typical, again, of parametric multivariate tests. All the samples must be independent of one another, as well as being multivariate normal. So like many parametric tests, particularly for central tendency, MANOVA is fairly robust to non-normality, as long as the sample sizes are large, and as long as the variables aren't really skewed. The samples must also have equal variance-covariance matrices. You often see this referred to by a technical term, homogeneity of variance, covariance matrices. Uh, so there's a lot of things to assess, especially if you have lots of samples and lots of variables. But the best approach is to assess them graphically. Hypothesis testing for these assumptions, you can test for multivariate normality, you can test for equality of variance, you can test for the variance, covariance matrix equality with, with proper tests, but they're too strict for evaluating the assumptions. 
And yes, this will take a while to assess all these assumptions because you need to look at each variable within each sample as well as the covariances. So we're making a lot of graphs, a lot of histograms. You know, it gets quite complicated when you have this data, which is itself a fairly complicated setup. So when reporting the results, you should give the means of all the variables in all the samples, and this will likely be a table because it's fairly complicated. Um, if you only have two variables, you could make a scatter plot with the samples color-coded or using different symbols, perhaps. But if you have more than two, it's very difficult to graphically show these. You should give the test name, of course, report that you did BANOVA, the value of, statist of the statistic, make sure you list whether you use PILI's trace or Wilkes's lambda or whatever, um, give the approximate F value and its two degrees of freedom, and the P value for the test. So like at the bottom, it would be an example of how you might report this, these test statistics. So the MANOVA function in R is deceptively simple. But remember, there's a lot of assumptions and a lot of complexities with sample design. You know, things like unequal sample sizes, things like covariances between the variables can both be issues. We're just going to gloss over all of that because I'm not focusing specifically on the data that you might have. But if you're using this for sort of real work, you probably want to be careful and, and really assess whether what you have set up in terms of your sampling is good for, for MANOVA. So the MANOVA function, called MANOVA, have, has the same syntax as the ANOVA function, AOV, which you've already used, or linear models. Um, you use this formula input with the numeric data as a function of the category column in a particular data frame, generally. The difference here is that the numeric data must be a matrix because we have multivariate data. You'll have multiple columns in a matrix for each of your variables, as opposed to ANOVA, where you just have a single vector for your, your data. So you should store the MANOVA result as a variable and then run the summary function to see the details. Um, the output is quite brief. This is basically all you get for the output, but it gives you all the details that you need. Uh, I'll point out that there are two sets of degrees of freedom. There's, on the left, there's the DF column, 3 and 978 in this case. But actually, the one that you want for your approximate F is the, the box with the num numerator and denominator DFs, 9 and 2934 in, in this example here. So those are the ones that go with the approximate F that you're reporting. The summary function is where you can choose the test statistic. If you didn't want to use the PILI trace, um, the, that's, you can see it's the default here. Um, but you can select Wilkes's Lambda or Hotelling Lolly or other ones. So just a final word, we haven't covered tests for all the possibilities. If you, if you look at your flowchart, there are a number of outcomes, particularly on the multivariate side, that haven't been filled out yet. And this is partly because a lot of these goals are pretty esoteric and not really that widely used. I mean, there aren't very many situations where you want to test for differences in dispersion for multivariate non-normal data, for example. There are multivariate tests for dispersion, as well as non-parametric equivalents for hoteling T-squared and MANOVA, but there's often a number of different possibilities because of there's no real unique solution for multivariate extremeness. I will mention this thing called permanova or permutational MANOVA as a possibility if you have non-normal data and want to do MANOVA. It does seem to be fairly widespread, at least, at least in the biological literature. Um, but we're not going to cover tests for all these specific situations because you're not likely to encounter them. They're a bit more sophisticated than we really need for 99% of our data analysis. Um, so you can look into them later on if, if you need to for your particular work. I also point out that, that we are going to cover an approach called resampling methods, which includes like randomization and bootstrapping. These will be covered uh, in the next week. And these are sort of the ultimate in non-parametric distribution-free statistics. You can use resampling methods for all these bizarre problems you might have about multivariate tested dispersion. Um, and you can use resampling methods for all sorts of other situations that might be challenging for traditional statistics. And so that's where we're going next, uh, and then we'll move on to sort of more data analysis things in the last few weeks of the class.